Welcome to Latin for Non-Romans, or as I like to call it, Latin for Barbarians. The third conjugation. The verb. But what is a verb? A verb is a word used for describing an action. We call these doing words. Now we see Latin is an inflected language. It likes to wrap every word up in a neat little package, and the verb is no exception. A verb can provide us vital clues about a sentence. For example, the endings tell us the person, who is doing the action, number, how many of us are there, tense, when are we doing it, voice, active or passive, and finally mood, indicative or subjunctive. Just like nouns, Latin verbs can be categorized into various types. We call these types conjugations. These classifications are based on theme vowels, a, e, short e, and i, and the behavior of the verbs in the present system. If you have been following along, then you will know by now that the Latin verb consists of a stem, a theme vowel, sometimes an infix, and your personal endings, ost, mustis, nt. We saw that for the first conjugation, the theme vowel was a, while the second conjugation theme vowel was a long e. In contrast, the third conjugation verb, like the third declension noun, appears irregular and just weird. But that is just because we haven't gotten to know it yet. If you remember, the second conjugation had a strong E. In contrast, the third conjugation has a weak E. That means you will see its big brother I drop in for the present tense as your theme vowel. We call this a vowel raising. But then that short e will return for the imperfect and future tenses. Let's take a look at an example. All right, so let's take a look at the present tense, starting with the first person singular, curo, I run, second person singular, curis, you run, third person singular, curit, he, she, or it runs, first person plural, curimus, we run, second person plural, curitis, you all run, third person plural, curunt, they run. Now turning to the imperfect, curebam, curebas, curebat, curebamus, curebatis, curebant. And as you can see, the E returns, taking its place between the stem cur and the infix ba and personal endings, m, s, t, mus, tis, int. Turning to the future, as you can see, the E returns in full force. Starting with the first person singular, karam. Second person singular, kores. Third person singular, koret. First person plural, koremus. Second person plural, koretis. And third person plural, current. Now we turn to the perfect system. And as you'll notice, we have a reduplication of the perfect stem. Not just core, but kukor. So starting with the first person singular, kokori. Second person singular, kokoristi. Third person singular, kokorit. First person plural, kokorimus. Second person plural, kokoristis. Third person plural, kokorerunt. Now turning to the pluperfect, first person singular, kukureram, second person singular, kukureras, third person singular, kukurerat, first person plural, kukureramus, second person plural, kukureratus, third person plural, kukurerat. And now we turn to the future perfect, first person singular, kukurero, 
Second person singular, cucareris. Third person singular, cucareret. First person plural, cucareremus. Second person plural, cucareritus. And the third person plural, cucarerent. I will have run, you will have run, he, she, it will have run, we will have run, you all will have run, and they will have run. It's as simple as that. Fakili est. Thank you all for joining me today for Latin for Non-Romans. I look forward to seeing everyone next time.